Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. The anointing teaches to abide in Christ is the title of this devotion. Here in 1 John 2 verse 27, it says, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teaches you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Now that one little verse we could do so many devotions on because it's so rich. But I really feel to, first of all, remind you, it's not possible to be Christian and not have an anointing. The two are synonymous because the very word Christ means anointing. So Christian means anointed one. What is the anointing? It's the spirit in your heart, acknowledging, bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. The Bible says it, that we have the spirit bearing witness with our spirit, that we are children of God, that we're born of his spirit. It says it here, if you just, in case you kind of go, where does it say that, Pastor? It's in chapter 8 of, you did not receive a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom you cry, Abba, Father. Verse 16 of Romans 8, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That is the anointing. It's the spirit of life in Christ in you. Once you were dead in sin and trespasses, but now you have been made alive together with Christ. Christ who is your life. He is the spirit of life. He is the knowledge of the Father. He is the Holy Spirit in its fullness. Jesus Christ is God from eternity to eternity. He's God, as I have said to you many times. He has never been an angel. He's always been the eternal God the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And it's important you recognize God in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, that he who has the Son has the Father, he who has the Son has life, and on and on and on. Jesus is the everlasting Father. He is eternal life. He is God. And you have this anointing of his spirit in you, bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, that you're born of God, that you have been made alive to the Father. And that spirit keeps holding you, holding you, holding you into the Lord Jesus. I, I read it to you many times, but I will read it again. I, I, you, As you know, I love this little verse and I love reading it. It's Colossians chapter two, verse 9 and 10. For in him, in Christ, the whole fullness of the deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. Listen, verse 10 of Colossians 2. You are in him made full, having come the fullness of life in Christ. You too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature in Christ. You reach full spiritual stature. I believe that is true now, that we are constantly being renewed in the inward man, man through the spirit of life in Christ. We're being kept alive. You know, I've said this before, that spiritual forgetting is like hunger or thirst. Spiritual remembering is eating and drinking. Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 35, whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Chapter 6, verse 57, as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. And I am so grateful that that teaching is there because we all can feel spiritually forget. Spiritual forgetting usually is expressed in being self-conscious. Spiritual starving is usually expressed in becoming the world conscious. 
you, you, you feel the world and its feelings and thoughts and its desires and all of these things. Self-conscious, you feel your weak human nature and all of its frailties and everything. And that's what it means to be spiritually hungry, spiritually thirsty. But then you come to the Lord and again there is the feeding the inward manifestation of the heavenly life of the Son of God, and that's feeding upon Him. And then you are God conscious instead of self conscious. <coughs> you are conscious of His perfect righteousness, peace, and joy, and know no charge against you. It's the wonder of true Christianity that He who is our surety is our life, and He consistently, constantly, without ceasing, feeds us with His life with His holiness, with His beauty, and conforms us to His own person, to His own nature by revealing all of Himself in us. And this is the anointing, teaching, teaching you to abide in Christ, to recognize Christ, to know Christ. And that anointing is true and not a lie. There's nothing in it that can deviate you from the knowledge of the Father and the Son. It's, if, if the anointing is true, it will always manifest the Father through the Son and the Son through the Father. It will always bring you into that perfect fellowship with the Father, the distinguishing mark of true Christianity. That is the absolute truth, my dear friends. It says here in, in, in 1 John, oh, how I love these thoughts. How I love these thoughts. Sorry for repeating myself so often. It says, What we have seen ourselves have heard, we're telling you that you too may realize and enjoy fellowship as partners and partakers with us. And this fellowship that we have <clears throat> with the Father and with His Son is the distinguishing mark of, Christi of Christians. This fellowship, the anointing, let it be true to always bring in fellowship with the Father and His Son. That is what is the truth of it. That is what reveals its authenticity as it coming truly from the throne, that it brings you into the conscious knowledge of the Father and the Son. For me, this is an absolute vital, vital passion. I, 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 I am driven by within my praying and believing and trusting God that I may have the high holy privilege to see people come and share this fellowship I have with the Father and with His Son and to bring them into this fellowship by the anointing, by the manifestation of His Spirit in my flesh. That's what the word anointing means, the manifestation of the Spirit in the flesh and that I may bring them into that perfect union with the Father. And, and what is the objective of it? Look what it says here in <clears throat> Ephesians 4 verse 13. In the previous verses it says, In Christ, according to the grace given, gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints. Right? And then he says in verse 13, that it might develop, yes, until we all attain oneness of the faith. The, the true ministry of any of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers that represent Jesus is that we all come to the oneness of the faith, the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive at a really mature manhood, maturity in other words, the completeness of personality which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, the completeness found in Him. The anointing teaches you to abide in Him. I would not want that anointing for any other purpose than for which it was truly given. That all the Father has given to the Son and all that the Son is and does in the Father is for you and me. And that we all share in that fellowship with the Father and the Son. That we live in the fullness of it. That we enjoy the richest measure of His divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God Himself through the love of the love of the love of the Savior, Jesus Christ. 
His love is incomprehensibly great. Let me close with this verse here from chapter 3 of Ephesians, that he may grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality that Christ through faith actually may settle down, abide and make his permanent home in your heart that you being rooted in his love and securely founded on his love may have the power and be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, the experience of Christ's love, which is the breadth of it, the length, the height, the depth of it, so that you may really come to know practically through experience for yourselves, the love of Jesus Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled through all your being until the fullness of God and may have the richest measure of his divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. Wow, the anointing, the anointing in you is to teach you to abide in Christ and to be able to share that with others. Wow, wow, wow. Amen. Have a good day.